Now, last time we ended in 2 Thessalonians, let me take you back there because we really didn't finish, okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I want to show you, Paul makes four points that explains what's happening in the global deception. But look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because what the scriptures tell us is this hurricane of apostasy is coming so fast and it's going to follow exactly the plan the Lord laid down. Second Thessalonians gives us four elements, starting in verse 3 of chapter 2. First, truth gets abandoned. That's, that's the first hallmark of the apostasy is that truth gets abandoned. Now, it's happening all around us. I mean, what people say is, you know, don't sweat the little stuff like the truth, you know? Just worry about the big stuff. Well, what is bigger than the truth? But you know what? People nowadays aren't interested in knowing the truth. You know, testimony, uh, I'm 57. I've been teaching publicly in all, every venue for 35 years. 35 years ago, people couldn't get enough of the truth. I mean, we didn't have any of all this, you know, electronic stuff. It was just plain paper Bibles and mimeographed that were barely legible note things. And, and they just, when I would go to a Bible conference and speak at a Bible conference, they would have three sessions. They'd have the morning session, they'd have the afternoon session, they'd have the evening session. And each, I mean, it was a few songs and then it was teaching the Bible. I mean, people just couldn't get enough of it. I'm still doing it. Do you know what it's now? These directors of all these conference centers, they're my friends, and they go, you know, people back home only go for 15-minute sermons. 20 is a long one. They said, one of your messages is like a month of everything they'd get back home. And they said, and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut down and only have one a day. Because, you know, people need to play golf and ride their scooters and, you know, I mean, they, they don't come to a Bible conference for the Bible and for truth. They come to relax, and it's very not relaxing to sit and, you know, so we're going to cut it down. And, and it's people no longer love truth. They tolerate it. Look at the worship services. We call them worship services. Worship is spirit and truth, emphasis truth. But, but people want a show, and then they want a dollop of whipped cream at the end, you know, a little Bible something, you know. It doesn't Bible light, just make sure it's light and just upbeat. Nothing heavy, nothing negative, nothing divisive. And that's what, look at what it says in verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. So truth is slowly getting abandoned. It's slowly getting marginalized. It's slowly getting neglected. And we see it already. Uh, truth gets abandoned. Look at the next thing it says in verse 4. The, then Almighty God gets pushed aside. When you push out the truth, who needs God? Because he's defined by the truth. And so it says that Almighty God gets pushed aside. Verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. He sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Wow. You know what verse 5 says? Gives us a little insight about what first century apostolic preaching was all about. What did Paul preach about? Paul was preaching to them about future events that impacted their present living. Paul talked much about the future. He was explaining to them where God's plan was going. He had no confusion what was going on. We have confusion. People say, oh, it's too confusing, so we aren't going to talk about it. That's when we have abandoned the way it was in the first century. The first century, Paul was telling them there's an antichrist coming, and he's going to be preceded by this declension of truth. And he said, so the way you get ready today is... Become a lover of the truth so God doesn't get pushed out of your life. We have man-centered Christianity nowadays. It's personality, it's celebrity, it's people-driven that feel good, and so you, you, you begin to erode the connection. As Jesus said, the people's lives are not founded on the rock. They're on the sand of whoever the current personality is. And that's why they get blown away. God gets pushed aside. 